Hello, today's lesson is going to be about statistics, the basics. So we're going to start out with our measures of central tendency, which are your basic mean, median, and mode, and we're going to define them. So I'm just going to start over here. Pick, choose color. All right, so mean is basically the average. And then this is also considered the arithmetic, arithmetic mean. So the average, which is basically equal to the sum of your data divided by the number of data values. The next definition is median. So the median is basically the middle number. And when that, of course, is when the data is in order. from least to greatest. Now the median can get a little confusing because um, it depends on whether you have an even or odd number of numbers. Um, if you have an odd number of numbers, so if you have an odd number of numbers or an odd um, number of data values then there is an exactly one median so there's exactly one middle number or median However, if you have an even number of numbers or an even number of data values, then you have to, the median is equal to the average of the two middle numbers. because there won't be an exact middle. So if you have an odd number of data values, then there will be exactly one middle number or median. If you have an even number of data values, then you, the median is gonna be the average of those two middle numbers. Okay, so the stars here, these are the definitions, basic things that you should already know. Um, and then we have Mode, which is another measure of central tendency, which is the data value that appears most often. So it is possible um, that it, it is possible to have no mode. So if all the numbers are different, or the all the data values are different, and it is also possible to have more than one mode. And again, that depends on if you have more than one number that appears the same number of times. All right, so those are your three measures of um, central tendency. 
I guess I could have labeled them up here, measures of central tendency. So that's basically what the mean, median, and mode are. Okay, so to find the best measure of center, so the best measure of center and I put that in question and quotation marks because it's going to change. It's not always the same. So the best measure of center is the value that represents the typical value in the data. Or in the data set. It can be the mean, median, or the mode. It just depends on the type of data that you are dealing with. and the distribution of the data. Because data can be skewed one way or another, depending on outliers, which you'll um, learn about later. So the best measure of center, again, is up to interpretation. It can be the mean, it could be the median or the mode, depending on the type of data that you're dealing with and the distribution of the data. All right, so the next um, thing that I would like to do, I would like to do two examples with an actual set of data, one with a nice odd set of numbers, and then another with an, uh, with an even set of numbers. So this is going to be my first thing here is going to be my odd example. Actually, I might need to start a new sheet of paper here. Um, oh, before I go on, though, let's see, to make the most of this sheet of paper, um, I'm going to add in just a couple more definitions. Um, your range. So your range is basically the difference between the highest and lowest value in the data. So you're basically the formula for your range is the max value minus the minimum value. So again, that's going to depend on the data. Um, what else besides range? Okay, so lower quartile and upper quartile. So your lower quartile which is also called Q1. So you're going to see that notation. So Q sub 1 is your lower quartile, is the median of the data below
the median of the set or of the data set. So it's the median of the data that's below the um, median of the entire data set. And then um, your upper quartile or Q th sub three is the median of the data that is above the median of the whole data set. And then you have another term called the interquartile data or the interquartile range. So you've got the range, which is the difference between the very highest and very lowest um, value in the set of data, but you also have the interquartile range. And I just have enough space here to finish this. So interquartile range which is also a IQR, so when you see IQR, that means the interquartile range. It basically is equal to the difference between the upper and lower quartile. So basically your IQR is equal to Q sub three minus Q sub one. So that's your formula for interquartile range. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video right now, and then I'll pick up with another one with an example with an odd set of data.